Well, welcome today, everyone, to this webinar. Uh, this webinar is all about how you can accelerate the adoption of your technology and how you can learn um, some more how to do that through a consortium model that is um, in place. So it, as one of the titles said, if you use the consortium model, your time is now. And so we're really thrilled to be having the opportunity to share with you this information and help you figure out how you can optimize your technology evaluations in life sciences and healthcare and be more successful in the marketplace. So with uh, no further ado, I'm going to get started, but I will remind everyone that on the right-hand side of the screen, there is a chat box. And if you have any questions for me as you as we go along, you can just put questions in the chat box, and I will answer them either as we proceed or at the end of the, the presentation. Um, additionally, at the end of the presentation, there will be a survey, and we would certainly appreciate you filling out that survey to let us know what additional things you would be interested in having a webinars um, cover in the in the future sessions that we run. We run both scientific discussions as well as business discussions, um, so either ideas on either front would be great. And the reason why we run both scientific discussions and business discussions is that our goal here at Cambridge Health Tech Associates is to help you transform your science into commercial success. And today we're going to talk about that as I said, um, in regards to the consortium model and how it can help accelerate the adoption of your technology. So if you don't know about us, um, Cambridge Health Tech Associates has been around for about 10 years. Um, and in regards to the consortium, we've had this um, technology evaluation consortium for almost all of those 10 years. It is a collaborative partnership with the pharmaceutical and the biotech industry. And actually, it's very interesting because they asked us to put this consortium together, like I said, almost 10 years ago. And the reason why they did is they asked us to do this because they said there's got to be a better way for us all to learn quicker, to share ideas faster, and to make decisions on how to move forward with new science and new technologies and new services that we haven't considered in the past. So we play the role of honest broker, um, bringing together both the industry on the one side and the technology or service provider on the other side is so that we can help the industry understand better where to use this new technology or new service in their drug discovery and development process. Um, we also have a similar uh, program for healthcare products. Um, and what we do there is we bring the technology to the end users, like physicians and pharmacists, et cetera, et cetera. But today we're just going to be focused on our offering in the life sciences area and the consortium that we've had in place for, like I said, pretty much the last 10 years. So we actually offer three sets of services here at Cambridge Health Tech Associates. We do consulting and market research, which I call kind of the thinking phase or whatever you're doing. So if you need to write a business plan, a marketing plan, a communications plan, a strategic plan, or if you need to do a bunch of market research, maybe you need to do some qualitative research like focus groups or one-on-one -on -one interviews, or you're trying to figure out a more quantitative look at the, the market at size, you know, maybe look at some positioning alternatives, understand, you know, pricing, things like that. That's all in the, in the consulting and market research piece of what we do. I'll get really in-depth today around our technology evaluations. And then we also have a full-service marketing communications offering, which we launched over a year ago. Um, but the team is very, very experienced in doing that for the last 10 years as well. So. I'll give you a few highlights about that in a, in a moment. So a little bit more about us before I move on to some research for you that uh, we conducted recently. So we are a sister company to Cambridge Health Tech Institute, or CHI, who, as you probably know, is a leader in science educational conferences, doing about 200 conferences for the last 20 years. Um, this uh, teaming of, for us, being a sister company to CHI, gives us really an inside track in regards to the key trends and issues in life sciences. And one of the ways that we also up that ante, so to speak, and give you even more information is we have a huge, huge database of over 900,000 decision makers all across the life sciences industry all around the world. Um, and through that, we have a longstanding history of doing technology evaluations with vendors and technology and service providers all across um, the industry. So today, if we look at the science of healthcare, 
there's so many things that are going on. Usually when I'm doing this in front of a live audience, I ask everybody to answer this question. So maybe you can just think about it yourself for a moment. And in the science of healthcare, um, are things getting easier? There's so many things happening, so much great technology. Do you find that things are getting easier for you with all these new options and things that are, that are happening? Or conversely, do you find that things are getting harder, that it's more complicated, that there's more choices, that there's more things to consider? Well, when I do this in front of a live audience, most people say that things are getting harder rather than easier. And that's really where we come in and we, where we try to help you simplify what you have to offer to the marketplace and help you be a success and help you commercialize that and help you turn your science into something that lots of people are going to use and lots of people are going to try out. So um, just a few more thoughts about our consulting and market research. Uh, what we really try here to do is bring you both the data that we know about the industry and our, through our expertise, but also go out there and talk to the customers and validate it with them. It's really important that we all don't get stuck in our little corners thinking that we know all the answers, but that we actually talk to the end users or survey the end users and understand is it going to be the vice president who, who decide to use your, your new technology or your new service, will it be the managers or will it be the front frontline bench people? So we really bring these two pieces. Whenever we do any market research or a project for you, like um, like writing a business plan or a marketing communications plan, we bring both a scientist and a business person to the project so that you have the best results coming out and we can be most insightful and, and provide you with the best solution. So we're really thrilled to be able to offer that two-pronged approach where you get a scientist and a business person on every project. Um, in our marketing and communications area, that was the third area I talked about. This is what everyone needs in order to be successful. Um, we do. We have some online communities um, that we offer, and we really specialize in looking at your whole program holistically, whether it be press releases, a new website, a logo, webinars, white papers, anything you could need. I have a whole long list, and if you'd like me to send it to you, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. But what I think is a bit different about us is we take, again, a two-pronged approach here, is that we think about it, um, and we have experts that work on our team that really help you position yourself scientifically, because um, if you help make sure that you're positioned as a thought leader, as an expert in the marketplace, you'll really be able to outperform your competition no matter what you're offering. And it's really that science of understanding what your, not just what your customers want and need, but what they must have to make sure that they go along that path of sort of knowing about you to deciding to use you and then just then deciding to recommend you to other people. So it's a really uh, great uh, methodology that we use in order to bring you along that path to success. The other thing that we do is we also really closely pay attention to the fact that no one buys anything from anyone else unless they feel like they've built a relationship with that person or with that organization. So we combine the scientific-based marketing and communications with the relationship-based marketing and communications, like social media, like live events, like things like webinars, and really make sure that you're hitting a home run on both fronts so that you can be successful. So I'll move to today's agenda, which is to talk to you about technology evaluations and our technology evaluation consortium to tell you how it's so important to understand how this audience of life science people make their decisions and what they use and how they think through the process and how the consortium approach can really, really help you in that regard. So as I said, we have this technology evaluation consortium, which we've had now for over nine years. And um, as I also said, it was created and it's still today managed and, and, and the strategic direction is set by the industry. So we have a steering committee of pharmaceutical and biotech members who decide where we're going, uh, what we're headed towards, and what they want to evaluate and what they think is important. Um, not to say that what you have um, isn't going to be or shouldn't be on their radar screen, but this is a way for you to put your technology forward um, within the context of what they like to look for. So they're very excited to, um, to be working in this and, and seeing the new technology. One of the issues that is very important to consider is that um, you may have seen this book before, and it's called Crossing the Chasm. And it's talking about the fact that you may get those early innovators to adopt your technology, but how do you jump across that chasm of the early innovators into having the vast majority of potential users you know, feel very comfortable with what you have to offer and also help you, you bring that into the organization and make it a success? So um, really, 
we use all the resources at our um, at our beck and call, so to speak, to to really help you move that uh, technology into a successful place in the marketplace. So we use our database, we use um, adoption surveys, we look at helping you screen the technologies, and then the the uh, penultimate thing is our technology evaluation consortium. So if if something doesn't quite um, hit you through this presentation, but you still know that you need to have the industry evaluate your technology. Um, I would love to have a conversation with you afterwards and figure out how we could do something for you that, that makes sense for your service or your technology in the marketplace. So let me give you a, bit, a little bit of background, and you probably know a lot of this already, but I call it a tectonic shift that has happened in the healthcare science and discovery space. There's so many things that have occurred, but for the first time ever, probably in about 30 or 40 years, there has been a huge, huge major downsizing in the R&D departments of every major pharmaceutical company. What I kind of say is they, they, they opened up the earth and they took 50% of their staff and they basically shoved them in that hole and then they closed up the earth again, which is really, really unfortunate, but it, it had to be done for many, many financial reasons. But the problem is, is it wasn't done because they said, oh, we figured out how to make drugs better and faster and quicker you know, how to take them through the clinical trials more quickly, they really haven't figured out what the efficiencies need to be. So they continue to look for solutions, they continue to look for new models, they continue to try to be flexible so that they can understand how to best succeed, and they're really looking a lot more at collaborative business models. Um, I was talking to, or actually listening to a presentation from a, a VP of a major top a pharmaceutical company, um, oh, probably about nine months ago or so, and what he said in his presentation is that, you know, X number of years ago, we figured out the model. We knew that if we put five drugs into the end stage of clinical research, we would get one drug out the end. So we said, okay, now let's put 10 drugs in, and we'll get two out the other side. And he said, uh-uh, hasn't happened. We're now putting 10 drugs in, and we're still only getting one out the other end. So all along the continuum of early, you know, investigation of what are the best compounds to all the way through the clinical trials, um, the industry is looking for more solutions, and that's why um, I think this technology evaluation consortium makes so much sense because of, of what they're looking at. So you may have seen just uh, actually yesterday that I just published a new blog on one of our websites about the decline in research and development in the pharmaceutical and biotech industry. So I, I put the URL there in case you're interested in reading it and would love to hear your feedback and thoughts about that article. Um, we're going to be issuing a continuing series of articles to get people to think about what are some incremental solutions that we can all bring to the industry to make it more efficient from a productivity and a, a technology adoption perspective. Um, this is an article that was actually published in the Boston Globe actually over a year ago. And what it was was an announcement at a major conference that was happening in Boston at the time. And it talked about the fact that drug firms are seeking new ways to do business. So even then, over um, a year ago, the, the, the article talked about the fact that the industry is, is looking for new collaborative business models to share the cost and the risk of drug discovery and bring more treatments to market. Um, but some of their concerns um, need to be addressed in that process as well. And that's where things like um, our program comes in, which I'll, I'll get to in a few minutes. So we all know that we've seen over the last 15 years that pharmaceutical companies have become virtual drug makers. They've been outsourcing operations, everything from research and drug testing to clinical trials and manufacturing. But that acceleration, or there has been an acceleration of outsourcing, um, because they found that it's worked in some of these areas, and they found that outside parties can often perform these functions cheaper and, and better. But in that Massachusetts, um, the, the Boston Globe article that I just showed you a second ago, what that was actually about was that actually the government is getting into the game of bringing together uh, pharmaceutical companies. And in that article, state officials were supporting the collaboration trend, but and in the article's words, not my words, but corralling seven drug companies into forming a novel neuroscience consortium. So whether it be the pharmaceutical and biotech industry themselves trying to look for unique ways to do business, or let's, in this case, um, a state, trying to say we need to bring more um, jobs in this industry to our state, so we're going to put together a consortium ourselves. Um, there's been many people trying to do this over the last number of years, 
with varying levels of success and, and implementation, but it is something that the industry is still considering, um, still wanting to do, and, and still looking at how they can use these models to be more effective as, as they go forward. Um, but one of the things that was also said in that article in the Boston Globe was that much of the success will depend upon how the partnerships are managed and whether their contracts are drawn up in a way that prevents fights over intellectual property. So that's one of the benefits that our consortium provides is we've been, as I said, running it now for almost 10 years. And so we have these contracts that have been well tested that do protect people's intellectual property rights and, and make sure that we can get projects up and going very quickly and get you into the, the, the mode of bringing your technology to the scientific community in a much faster way than you might be able to do on your own. Um, we have about 10 to 15 pharmaceutical companies who join this consortium every year, and they bring to the table the subject matter experts that we need to be discussing all the various technologies that we're looking at. So our history is that we've conducted um, about over 25 projects to date, and our goal is to bring the industry about four to six new um, hands-on, very intensive projects every single year. And we have really fine-tuned our structure um, where we look at you know, things like in-depth interactive discussions, we um, look at data collection and validation, and really all of this we feel is super, super critical to ensure that we can help accelerate the adoption of technology and bring those new scientific advances to the industry in a, in a faster, more effective way. <clears throat> so recently we actually conducted a survey where we looked at under, trying to understand better the decision-making process and the evaluation of new technologies in the industry. And here we had over 96 people participate in this survey to get a better handle on what is the industry looking at and what is the industry, how do they make their decisions as we go forward. So in this um, survey, we looked at um, both small, medium, and large companies uh, in regards to how they spent their R&D budget and kind of had a pretty even sample uh, across this, uh, this survey. The bulk of the respondents in this particular survey were all about um, people who were in early drug discovery or preclinical phases of R&D. Um, so a, a great sample to, to look at to understand how people are looking at new science and new technology. And what we found across the board is although there were many things that people needed to uh, better understand, like for instance, if we start at the bottom of this chart, you know, how will this new technology um, interrupt my, my current processes? Um, how big is the learning curve? You know, do I have to teach people a lot of new things? Do I have the in internal competency to use this new technology? Um, are there lots of service providers? How much does it cost? How much time is required to realize the benefit? And how can I integrate this new service or this new technology into my systems and processes and my decision making? Well, the one, number one thing across the board that everyone said was their key concern in adopting any new technology or service into their organization was whether or not the technology was validated. And this uniquely is what the industry asked us to put in our technology evaluation consortium over nine years ago, was they said we want a process to roll up our sleeves and try out this new technology and really evaluate it and come out the other end with some validation, some data validation, some real hard numbers. We can say we know this works and it's great science and we feel comfortable recommending it to the rest of our organization. So that is one of the main tenets of the Technology Evaluation Consortium is to come out the other end with a number of pharmaceutical companies, a number of subject matter experts who feel comfortable that they have been part of an active process at evaluating this new technology or service. And as I said before, we play that role of honest broker and we make sure it's a really a scientifically strong evaluation. We have our, um, I'll highlight them a little bit further on, but Dr. Ernie Bush, he heads up all of our technologies um, and has been doing this for every project um, over the last while. So you may be thinking, well, what are companies evaluating today? So in, in that survey that we conducted, we asked people to tell us what, what technologies did you last evaluate in your company? And what you can see, I'm going to show you four different slides, is there's tons and tons of stuff that people are looking at evaluating that they want validation data about, that they'd actually like to try out in a collaborative way and work with their other industry partners to consider how best to bring these new technologies into their organization. So we have just categorized them um, how we thought it made sense 
but you might see that there's other categorizations that we could also have. But you can see here that there's people looking at things in the area of drug delivery, in the areas of new equipment, um, high content and high throughput, um, imaging, omics, different model studies, lot, you know, lots of uh, looking at how can I better understand you know, how my drug will act in the human body by looking at, at various um, animal models or other models that they, they could consider. And then where we started originally, actually 10 years ago, was in the area of drug safety and preclinical safety. So there's lots of work that still continues to go on there. But I'm sure a number of you are aware of the fact that this whole area of sequencing, genomics, RNA, and DNA has really grown in the last number of years. And we can see a lot of activity in this area as well as people are trying to understand how to bring these new technologies into the, into the uh, drug discovery and development process. So very exciting times. And, you know, if your technology isn't listed here, it doesn't mean that the industry is not considering it because we just asked them for a snapshot. It wasn't um, that they said, what's everything that I've been looking at um, in, in the last two or three years. We've typically done those studies separately where we say, um, what did you evaluate last year? What are you looking at this year? What are your plans for next year? And what have you totally abandoned? In this case, we decided to just do it at a, at a point in time as, as sort of a snapshot. So a little bit about our team. Um, I'm just so very thrilled to be working with this team that I always like to highlight them. Um, first is Dr. Ernie Bush, as I mentioned, and he has a significant number of, of, of years of experience working in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, his, the last big, big company that he worked at was uh, Roche uh, Pharmaceuticals, and he's been, you know, part of the process of making go, no-go decisions on what's going to be done with compounds. And so then understanding all the tools and all the services and all the technologies that you can use to make those go no decisions is critical. And Ernie really brings that sort of insight to our team. And like I said, he has managed every collaborative project that we've done over the last 10 years. Um, another person as, a, as part of our team who is entirely relevant um, in today's marketplace is uh, Dr. Kevin Davis. Kevin has um, over 20 years experience in genomics, genetics, bioinformatics, personalized medicine, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, he was the first editor of the first spin-off of Nature Magazine. So the first spin-off of Nature Magazine was actually called Nature Genetics, and Kevin was the first editor of that magazine. He's also written three books, all in the area of genomics and genetics, with his most recent book um, being published a couple of years ago called The $1,000 Genome, and if you've been following any of the literature in this area, you know that there's some companies out there who have just announced that they've crossed that barrier and now have an offering that's um, $1,000 or less for, um, for doing the human genome. So very um, exciting to be, be looking at this uh, field and understanding how we can help um, move things forward in the area of drug discovery. So my background is really all about commercialization. I've also worked in the pharmaceutical industry for about 17 years. And I have experience with also devices and diagnostics and bringing techn technology to the marketplace. So um, lots of relevant experience from that perspective. And then another person I'd just like to highlight, because I, I know a lot of times companies with their science, they're thinking about you know, getting to market, having people utilize it, and then eventually they might either want to um, you know, sell their company or go to an ICO or something like that. So, this, um, Tony Flynn is also part of our team, so he has a lot of experience not in just being successful in uh, bringing you know, singular technologies to market, but also bringing them to um, a financial success and then also creating markets. So his experience is quite relevant and, um, and quite strong in this area as well. So let's talk a little bit more about the um, Technology Evaluation Consortium, and I'll give you two case studies that hopefully will give you a perspective on, on how things work. So what, what are the key motivators both for the industry, the pharma and biotech industry, and for a technology or service supplier? Um, so if we look at pharma, they're try they rely increasingly on collaborations with their peers, both to accelerate their learning and to reduce the cost and risk and really fundamentally to speed the, the delivery of new drugs to the marketplace and to expand the innovation and to improve that ratio of putting five or ten, you know, compounds in and, and getting back to maybe two or even three coming out the other end. So really, they're looking for, um, for us to bring them this continuous, repeatable process 
where we help them evaluate new technologies and they get to to hear what's happening from their um, their industry colleagues in a very much uh, non-competitive environment. On the vendor side, people love this um, this process because you really get to see how your technology should be positioned, where it can best be utilized, you get to go through a validation process where you get validation data. Um, it's really a robust scientific way to get feedback. Um, how, do you, how, how does the industry want to hear from you in the future? What information is most relevant? Um, you get, you know, instead of being pulled in, in 20 different directions by, you know, 20 different pharmaceutical companies, you get to see what the core of all pharmaceutical companies would like to see from you. So I call that feature normalization. You get counsel. So these, these uh, pharmaceutical and biotech companies, they sit side by side with you and give you advice. Give you advice on how to be successful or how to um, morph or change your offering so that they can see that they can use this in, in accelerating drug discovery, um, development, and approval in the marketplace. So really, it's kind of like a multiplier effect because you spend a number of months working with this team kind of side by side almost, although although it's, just, it's just remote around the whole world, so it's not quite side by side, but they you know, not only become sort of your, your development team, but your implementation team and your advice and counsel team. So it's, it's a really great way to, to kind of uh, kickstart things and move them forward for you. Um, so our role is we, we have the structure. We bring together the pharmaceutical companies with the new technology or service for them to evaluate in, in an area of importance. And then we, we propose um, that technology that industry tells us, you know, where it would be best utilized in their um, – their processes and their organizations. And then we provide all of the um, project management, all of the in infrastructure. We provide also through Dr. Ernie Bush our own independent analysis. And, and we, we um, make sure that everything is kept in a place so that people can, can share, can communicate, can, um, can ensure that your science is, is moving forward and we get out of it at the end a report. We get out of the, a report. Um, we have usually a summit meeting. Either we have a couple summit meetings along or we have a major summit meeting at the end where you're having face-to-face -face input and feedback and discussions with the, the, um, the decision makers in the industry. So we, we don't just have the steering committee, but they also bring to bear the, um, the, uh, the uh, subject matter experts that are important to, to your area of science. So um, I think I crossed this before, but I covered this before, but it's just another reminder again about that, um, you know, crossing the chasm and how it's so important to learn to leapfrog and get greater adoption in the industry that you consider something like this. Um, as I said, we ha did originally start this, this in um, drug safety. Um, we moved and grew into areas like next generation sequencing. And last year in 2013, we said, let's open this up to all areas of science in, in life sciences to the industry, and we've included things like clinical research, efficacy tools, computational biology. Um, we even have a project right now in oncology. So it's been, it's been really, really fabulous. Um, the last piece of our role is neutrality. We play that role of a third party, a trusted third party, and we, we really are trying to adjust the, address the common challenges of the industry and the needs of the technology or service provider as well. Um, and we really have a proven framework. We have all the contracts in place. We coordinate all the meetings. We manage all the documents, all the data analysis and reports. So we take that burden off both of our, our, our groups, both the, the industry group of the pharmaceutical and biotech companies, and we take the burden off of you as the technology or service provider in order to make sure that, that things move quickly and we get to the point of considering what's most important. I know I've covered a bunch of this already, but this just provides it to you in another framework. Um, Ernie Bush there, our scientific director. We have a project manager. You have me sort of as a consultant and technology advisor all along the way. Um, we bring together uh, the technology vendor with the steering committee and then the subject matter experts. So you wind up having tons of people who give you the feedback and advice all along the way across that spectrum. Um, the milestones really are that we help you prepare, we help get you ready to present to the Pharmaceutical Steering Committee. Um, we help make sure that you're differentiated. We can help define what the message is that you're going to be presenting to them. We organize the kickoff. Um, we organize all the meetings, um, make sure that the objectives are set for everyone, that the subject matter experts from your particular area have been appointed 
that everyone, um, that people attend the meetings. We also record every meeting so people can attend them live. They can watch them afterwards as a webinar. We run all the evaluations. If you need to have um, a data set provided of compounds, we also have a compound uh, library that actually has um, clinical results that we can um, compare with it or, you know, assay results that we can bring to bear if that's needed for your technology. We make sure that everyone, um, you and the industry, all put, analyze the data collectively. We're looking for individual feedback or consensus on the feedback, and then we prepare um, a report to look at all the results. In the end, we deliver a final report with recommendations coming from the industry. We organize a concluding summit, and we also share the findings through a, um, a company-wide industry webinar with the technology provider. So we give you a chance to reach out to other people in all of the um, consortium companies to share what you did in this project and, um, and, and how it can be successful in each environment. And then, of course, throughout this process and after it, you know, you're going to be engaging directly with the interested pharmaceutical companies and their purchasing experts, et cetera, et cetera, to understand better how you can be successful at actually having them utilize your, your technology or your service. So the onboarding steps would be is you would complete a sponsor application. We would um, then um, have you uh, have that idea kind of float into the steering committee. Um, you would sign a contract with us to go ahead and implement that project with the Technology Evaluation Consortium. And then we would kick off the project and determine the schedule on how we're going to get started and how long we think it'll take. And then we have that, that kickoff meeting. So it really goes pretty quickly once we, we decide that, um, you know, this is a, 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 a technology that um, would be interesting to the industry and all the contracts are signed off and then the application is completed. But on the industry side, it takes very little effort on their part because they've already told us what they're interested in. So we know what they'd like to see over the next while. And they have already signed all of their contracts with us on an annual basis. So on their side, it's very easy to get going. Um, it's just a matter of how fast we can, we can have you get going and move your clients forward to be evaluated. Um, here's a partial list of technology providers that have gone through this process before. Um, quite a great list of companies there um, with lots of success that a lot of them are having in the marketplace. So let me show you two quick case studies. And um, just a reminder, if you have any questions, I'd love to see them in the chat box. And um, I hope they'll answer them as we go along. So this was a small technology company that developed a new in vitro safety screen that claimed to be able to predict whether a drug could, would cause suicidal ideation as an adverse side effect. So if you think about this, this was, you know, testing in vitro for suicidal ideation, which I think is pretty amazing that they thought they could actually do this. And the pharmaceutical companies, they were quite thrilled to participate in this because they were also very keen to see if this could be proved out. And the science looked great in the, in the beginning. Um, so in this case, we had a project team with eight um, experts from, or experts from eight pharmaceutical companies, there's more than eight experts, but experts from eight pharmaceutical companies who came together and collaboratively developed a test hypothesis and a test protocol. So this is done in concert with the technology um, provider. So everyone sits around the table with ourselves as an equal participant, and we come up with what the project should be. In this case, we determined a library of test compounds, some test compounds that cause suicidal ideation, and some test compounds that did not cause suicidal ideation. And that's how we proceeded. What we then did is we um, blinded um, compounds um, for, actually, at first we ran a test set. So we first had an unblinded set of compounds that were given to the vendor so that they could run their model through and we could look at those results. And then we gave the vendor a set of blinded compounds um, to run through their technology. After that, all the results were distributed to everyone. They were, um, of course, they were with the vendor. They were given to us, and they were given to all the pharmaceutical companies. And then after the results were distributed, we unblinded the, um, the compounds so that everyone could see what the compounds were. And the goal here it was to have the whole group assess how well this technology did at evaluating the, um, 
you know, the, uh, pred the prediction of the adverse effects of suicidal ideation. So in this case, what we did is after the results had been received and analyzed, we held a face-to-face -face summit. Um, and the group really, the job there of the pharmaceutical companies and the vendor was really to evaluate the technology, look at the data, and come to a consensus. Well, the reason why I like to talk about this particular example is because when we held our first summit, um, and usually we only hold one, so I'm, I'm kind of giving you a heads up that we held two here. When we held our first summit, the results were not as clear and not as crisp and were not really as slam dunk as everyone thought they would be. So what you had is you had a group of pharmaceutical company and biotech people who sat around brainstorming and working with this vendor to say, what went wrong? What could we have all done better to show the results that we were looking for because we know they should have, have come forward and in a better way. And so what the, the pharmaceutical company realized eventually was that the statistician or statisticians that were used by this company were not sort of long-term experienced statisticians in this area. So the pharmaceutical company said, you know what, you need to go and take your data out to one of these three, pharma these three statistical companies and get them to re-look at your data. Because we believe that the data is strong, but we don't think you did a good statistical analysis. So that's exactly what they did. They went out to all three companies, they chose one of them, and they came back, and we held actually a second summit, and there you go. In the second summit, it was a slam dunk. It, it was shown very, very clearly that the drug, that, the, um, that the, the technology actually could predict suicidal ideation in vitro, in drugs, long before they went into animals or, or went into humans. So it's a great example of when people ask us, you know, do you always have a success coming out the other end? Well, in this case, if the company had gone forward with their data set, they weren't going to have success, but they had success with the pharmaceutical companies and the biotech companies giving them advice on, on how to move forward. So that's why I like to show this example because success is just as much, you know, the company is working with you as partnership as it is getting a sale out of them at the, at the other end um, because they, they understand you and they've gone through that data validation. So let me give you a totally different example just so you can see how things can be done totally differently as well. So this is our case study number two. And in this case, um, we all know that major pharmaceutical and biotech companies have years and years and years of drug development data that they really can't leverage. And this is because of many, many different reasons, mergers and acquisitions, et cetera, et cetera. So in this case, um, the pharmaceutical company said to us, they said, you know what, there's just so many vendors out there producing software solutions for all this data, but none of them have a sufficient solution. And we know that if we had to do the due diligence on each vendor ourselves, it would be time consuming and expensive. And we also know that none of them yet kind of hit the mark. So we're going to have to choose at least one vendor to co-develop a solution. We're going to have to invest some money in that vendor. And doing that could be costly and risky. So we want to ensure that we've done all of our due diligence before we go ahead with this, with this project and with this initiative. So what happened here is we had five pharmaceutical companies who wanted us to tackle this issue. And they said, okay, we want you to do the following. So what we did is we guided them on a consensus list of user requirements across these five pharmaceutical companies. We sourced nearly 50 potential partners for them. We drafted an RFP for 12 finalists, and we had five vendors present to the consortium in the end. Now, you might say, well, if I was one of those 50 vendors, did I lose out? Well, no, now you knew. Um, what the consensus was among five major pharmaceutical companies, you kind of got to a, a, a narrowed list of requirements. So if you were not providing what their major requirements are, you could say, well, at least now you knew what to do in your business plan and how to, you know, change yourself and change what you're offering to meet that. Or maybe you decide to go in a different direction. So through this process, it was really, really helpful for both the vendors and for the pharmaceutical companies. And in the end, the process instilled enough confidence for two companies, two pharmaceutical biotech companies, to move forward with one vendor. And then in the other case, um, for three companies to choose a different vendor, which totally makes sense, is that not every solution is right for every single company. Um, but here in this case, they were actually able to um, you know, make that decision and, and move forward 
with more confidence and more knowledge about the different offerings that were out there in the marketplace. So just to kind of summarize, um, the Technology Evaluation Consortium is really designed to provide significant advantages, um, and this is uh, both for the vendor and also for the pharmaceutical and biotech company. So some of the things that it can be done is you can reduce redundant activities. So if you're a technology provider, you don't have to go to each um, industry company one by one and try to meet their individual needs. Um, you can reduce the total cost for yourself in a project like this. And of course, the industry reduce their total cost of the project. We effectively, that, um, you know, the results are kind of like multiplicative. You have so many synergies. You have multiple experts who sit on the project team. They get to learn from each other. You get to learn from everybody and see where the consistencies are, where the divergencies are, and, and really understand how to be successful as you go forward. You also decrease the infrastructure associated with maintaining the contracts, the, the, the compound libraries if you need those, the databases, et cetera. And we do all that project management and work for you. Um, I've mentioned this quite a number of times now, the fact of um, crossing the chasm. And so really, we help you go from those early adopters into the early majority. And sort of reduce that risk of, um, of your, the due diligence that needs to be done for all new technologies and, and make sure that your product, your technology, and your service is evaluated in a timely fashion by as many people as possible. And it really allows everyone to share critical feedback, both, you know, feedback from a vendor to the industry, from the industry to the vendor, and back and forth in a circular fashion as we go all through the process. Because um, our goal is really to accelerate the adoption of the useful tools and have you find ways where you'll be most successful in, um, in helping uh, the industry uh, move forward. So a couple other things just to, um, to mention to you, and then I'll, I'll um, answer some questions that I've been receiving here. Um, so, as I said, we have the infrastructure, we have the framework, we have the contracts that are already in place, both NDA and material transfer agreements, and we have the tax compounds if they're needed for your project. If they're not needed, then, you know, those aren't, aren't utilized. And we have lots of experience in organizing and facilitating multi-company collaborations in life sciences. In fact, um, of all the consortiums that now exist, um, 10 years later, there are, of course, some other consortiums, a lot of the other ones are looking at more like... Um, standards in the industry rather than looking at specific technologies to be evaluated. In fact, this is the only one that I know of um, that actually gets it hands down, like down and dirty, so to speak, and actually evaluating new technologies and trying them out and, and getting, you know, validation data from them. So, um, you know, I would suggest that if you have a technology that, um, you know, you share it with me, you send me some information about it. You share, you know, you tell me, you know, how you think the industry could utilize it, what you, some of the um, use cases, you know, the areas where you think it would be best utilizing the industry, and let's talk about, what, you know, whether that makes sense for um, for what the industry is looking for, and you know, or, or do we need to, you know, do a little bit more homework before we go forward? Um, so one other thing, I other thing I just want to share with you um, is uh, one thing that we've created more recently is. The industry, although they love, love, love this technology evaluation consortium and getting actually hands-on usage, they said, we'd also like more of a, of a quick screening of things. Um, we also, sort of like almost a, a science fair type of uh, opportunity to show new technologies early on and give some quick feedback to the industry, um, to, the, to the vendors, and also, you know, do more of a triaging for ourselves of, of what's out there. So this last fall, we created for um, the industry, again, based upon their request, a brand new program, which we're calling the Signature Award. And what this program allows you as a technology provider to do is to really show leadership and show your scientific authority in the marketplace um, by, by participating in it. So what it is, is this is, um, again, an expansion of what we've been doing in the past. So this is available both in the life sciences sector and in the healthcare sector. And every new technology that goes through this program will be rated as either a blockbuster, an upstart, a novel new technology, or an innovator new technology. So across the board, um, everyone will, will get rated and get feedback from the industry and, and directly from subject matter experts. So in this case, it's a much smaller program. You do submit again an, app an application process. You will do one mini webinar 
Um, for those who are a commercial organization, you do a 30-minute webinar with the industry. For those who are an academic organization, you'll do a 15-minute webinar with the organization, I mean with the industry. And they will then rank you on a number of criteria based upon two dimensions, your readiness mm -hmm. for the marketplace and your value to the marketplace. So where, whether the value that they see in what you have to offer to them in, in being successful and helping them either in drug discovery or in the case of healthcare practitioners, in the case of um, helping move the healthcare forward. So as I said, this program is available to both commercial and academic technology and service providers, and it's brand new. And so like I said, you get rated on a quadrant, either upstart, blockbuster, innovator, or, or novel. <clears throat> and then after that rating, you will get to use one of those ribbons on all of your marketing and promotion material. So that's how you can help tell the world um, that you're a leader in the marketplace and that you're a scientific authority in your area. So I think I pretty much have covered this already. You get, as I said, um, an application that the industry reads. They bring forward the subject matter experts to evaluate you. And then they rate you. Um, the one thing I didn't mention so far is that people who are submitting themselves underneath the um, auspices of the uh, a commercial organization, if we have um, a minimum of four companies um, applying within um, any one category, the industry will choose one winner of a free technology evaluation consortium. So that whole big process that I was talking about before, we're going to be giving away one of those free for um, each category if we have a, a, a number of minimum minimum applications. So really the benefits here again are pretty similar to the other projects, although a bit more condensed, but they're very far reaching for you in that you get direct feedback from subject matter experts. Um, the end result of your rating, you could share that with potential investors um, in order to help validate your technology and show them that you've been given feedback by the industry when they're looking at um, investing in you. And you get this industry-derived designation of the signature award that will set you apart from the competition in the marketplace. So a really great way to kind of stand out and stand above um, the rest of the industry. You'll also get a report um, outlining your scores and all the qualitative feedback. Um, and you'll also, uh, again, be brought directly to the key industry decision makers who will be the ones evaluating you. Um, as, we, as we go forward. So I think I've, I've covered most of the, the detailed points of, of the signature award. But the industry, they love it. And again, like I said, they asked us to put something like this in place. Um, really, we're helping them increase the flow of new technologies being evaluated because everyone's struggling with the bombardment of new science out there and trying to understand, you know, can they triage things a bit? Can they understand what's a little bit better? What could they, should, should they be looking at? What should they be considering for future technology evaluations? And so it really helps accelerate that feedback loop between the industry and the technology providers. So again, this is another thing that we're offering besides the technology evaluation consortium. It's our new signature award program where um, Cambridge Health Tech Associates plays that role of honest broker bringing you in front of the industry to get them to give you feedback on how to be successful in the marketplace. Um, here's a list of the different categories. If you can't quite see it, I have at the bottom of the slide here put a link to um, a URL on our website. Basically, if you go to the signature award program categories, um, you can see all the different categories and decide where you'd like to submit your technology and where it applies. If you are in the life sciences, you will be evaluated by um, the members of our technology evaluation consortium. If you're outside of life sciences and then more in the healthcare area, you would be evaluated by the relevant healthcare practitioner. Um, you might find that you actually um, fit into numerous categories, so you can be evaluated in numerous categories. It's just that the subject matter experts would be different in each category, and so there would be a separate fee for each, each of those categories to be evaluated under. So how do you apply? Um, so whether it's the Technology Evaluation Consortium um, or it's the Signature Award, basically you send me an email letting me know that you'd like um, the application for either one of those. For the Signature Award, um, we do need your application fee at the time of receiving your application. For the Technology Evaluation Consortium, because that's more of a long-term project, we look at um, payment over the, the duration of the project until the completion of it. So that makes it a bit more more manageable for you as well. Um, again, if you do apply through the signature award, 
Um, you do have that chance to win a free technology evaluation consortium, or you can just bypass that and you know, go to a full technology evaluation consortium project um, on your own um, from that perspective. So um, again, I'll just summarize to say that we're all about trying to make you successful with your science in the marketplace, whether it be through consulting and market research, or through the technology evaluations, or through marketing and communications. We have lots of ways that we can help you. So I will open it up to even more questions, and we're going to put a survey into the chat box as well. We would really, really appreciate it if you could take a few moments and um, answer that survey. Um, if you have sent me any specific information about your technology, I would really love it if you could send that to me via an email, because um, the chat box will disappear after we um, end this discussion. And so I won't be able to look at what you might have sent me in the chat box if you want me to go and look at some links or something like that. Um, so one of the questions that's come through is, you know, that there's many small innovative companies struggling with, you know, doing things like meeting payroll, and the idea of spending money on a consortium sounds nice, but seems sort of impossible. Um, you know, maybe the big companies can afford it, but if I'm really small, um, how can I get started in this area? So, yeah, there is a, a more significant investment for um, a company to participate in a technology evaluation consortium. And what I always say to people is let's look at a phased approach for you. If you don't have um, the funds to jump into a, a large technology evaluation consortium, um, that was another reason why we started out with the signature award. Maybe we could just start um, giving you some basic feedback for the signature award project. Maybe you'll actually be the winner of the technology evaluation consortium in your category. Um, we often do um, early on uh, like market research projects for people where we understand better about what the market needs and what the market wants um, and, and where you can go from there. Um, and then some people feel like they already understand the marketplace. Maybe the industry has already evaluated them um, and maybe they're ready to, you're ready to jump right into marketing and communications. Um, I would say, though, that the bulk of our 25 projects over the last number of years have been with small companies. So we have tried to work with the small companies to find a way and a payment plan that will work for you to get in front of these 10 to 15 pharmaceutical companies because it's really a way to jumpstart your, your success in the marketplace. In fact, one of our companies right now, actually the only thing they did to launch their company was to do a technology evaluation consortium project. And then after we started that, then they used that information to go get more money from investors, and they used that information once they got the, um, the money from the investors. Now we're building their website for them, we've developed their logo for them, and now we're looking at some of the other marketing communications, like doing webinars with them, and newsletters, and white papers, et cetera, et cetera. So I always say, Let's figure out where you are in your life cycle. Let's figure out what your budget is and you know, how best we can you know, get you in front of the key decision makers in, in all the different ways that we have to offer solutions in the marketplace. Um, so I don't think that anything should be considered to be you know, prohibitive um, to any organization if we can work with you and kind of you know, manage it to fit your budget. Um, so, um, so someone had asked me here to go back and look for a few minutes at what technology organizations are looking for. So I'm uh, thinking that you're referring to um, the slides of the different categories. So it's hard for me to jump back, but I will go quickly. So hopefully you don't get dizzy looking at my slides moving. So I think it was the four slides of the different categories of what people are evaluating right now. And if I've got that wrong, if there was something else that you wanted me to show, I think it's these slides here. So just as a, as a point of reference, this was asking people what was the last new technology that you evaluated um, in, in most recently. So it, it's not a 100% audit of everything that they looked at in the last couple of years. And we also have this full list um, on our website. If you go to our website and click on, for instance, drug delivery, you'll see all these items listed on our, on our website as well, too. So there's four slides here um, that I'm just clicking through now fairly um, quickly. But, you know, we, we also have um, surveys that we do with the industry asking them what they would like to see evaluated. And I have not shown those to you today, although um, that's a good point. I will show those to you in a future webinar. But I can share those with you individually 
and you can tell me more about your technology, and I can tell you if, you know, you're kind of on the hit parade of what the industry would like to see more of as they, they look at new technologies that are out there. So um, it, it's really a collaborative process. We ask them every year what they would like to see. We talk to you about your new technologies. They may not even be asking for your new technology because they don't even know it exists yet. So that's part of the role we play is making them more knowledgeable about what's out there and, and how um, those things could help them be successful in the marketplace. So it is truly a very collaborative process. And I think, um, you know, I'm so thrilled to be here at Cambridge Health Tech Associates because um, I actually didn't create the Technology Evaluation Consortium. It was created long before I got here. But I can be the, um, the person to rave about it and say how amazing it is and how great this whole process is at, at helping the industry you know, get closer to you and getting you the feedback that you need in order to be um, successful. So I would encourage everyone, again, to fill out that survey, give us some feedback. Um, the very last slide, again, was um, the one that told you about, um, you know, my contact information. So therefore, I just figured out how to jump right to that one so that I don't make you busy. Um, but I would love to hear from you and love to chat with you about what could help make your uh, science uh, successful and how we can help you commercialize it and uh, help understand where you best fit in the marketplace and how you can um, cross that chasm and get more people to utilize what you have to offer. So um, I'll just ask one more time if anyone has any questions. And um, other than that, I hope to see you uh, both um, in cyberspace at, in some of on, you know, on our on our website, commenting on our blog, participating in some of our social media conversations or calling me or emailing me directly to see how we can help you be successful. So with, um, with that in mind, I'll leave you um, to the thought of how you can uh, think about what would make you successful in working with the industry and how we can make your science something that they're utilizing at a faster pace and a faster rate than they ever have before. So thanks again, everybody, today for your participation. And we will be sending this out to you as a, um, as a recorded webinar. And if there's other people in your organization that you think would like to listen to this, it will be available to be listened to after the fact. So again, have yourself a great day. And thanks for attending. And just one last reminder to fill out that survey and give us your feedback or connect with me directly. Thanks again. Take care.